Hello everyone! Uther the Lightbringer was a servant of the Holy Light, one of the first paladins of the Silver Hand, and his heroic deeds have earned him a place not only in Warcraft, but also in Hearthstone and in Heroes of the Storm. Who is this man and what has he done in his lifetime? That's what we're going to find out, so let's begin, shall we? Not much is known about Uther's youth, except that he was drawn to the light at a very early age, and he met Alonsus Fowl when he was just a bishop. Alonsus served as Uther's spiritual advisor and mentor, and Uther was a very skilled warrior. The first time that we really see him in the story is after the moment that the orcs destroyed Stormwind and the people fled to Lordaeron. Amongst those people were young Varian Rin, Ketgar, and Enduin Lothar. They warned King Ternus Menifil II about the threat of the Horde that the world had to unite against them if they wanted to stand a chance. The first alliance was born from this and it was Archbishop Alonsus Fowl who came up with the idea of adding paladins to their ranks. He had heard how the Northshire clerics had fallen to the might of the Horde and he realized that they needed something more in order to stand against them. Combine the teachings of the church with the skills of a warrior in order to create the first paladins of the Silver Hands. These paladins were Uther, Seden Dafrohan, Tyrion Fordring, Gavinrad, and Trellian. From all these paladins, Trellian was chosen to become one of Lothar's lieutenants, while Uther became the leader of the paladins. The paladins would turn out to be a huge success, some of the most powerful troops the Alliance had to offer, essential in the victory over the Horde since the Horde had started to add Death Knights into their ranks. These Death Knights did terrible damage to the Alliance troops, but they were no match for the Radiance of the Holy Light. The first time that the Death Knights showed up on the battlefield, Uther told his fellow men that the Holy Light would protect them. From his prayers, the Light enveloped the troops, protecting them from the dark magic and giving them a chance against the Death Knights. The paladins also assisted Lothar as he led the troops against the Horde and they were the ones who cleared Lordaeron of the remaining orcs when they failed to take the city. The paladins were also there in the final moments of the war, right outside of Black Rock Mountain. By that time the Horde was pushed back and this was the staging ground of their final major battle. The Alliance thought that they would have time to prepare for this battle, but the Horde wouldn't let them and they struck out on all fronts. Uther took his men, he prayed to the lights and he empowered them, giving them the strength to stand against the barbaric Horde. In the end, it was Trellian who found his faith in the light and he used its powers to defeat Orgrim Doomhammer. Orgrim had already killed Lothar by this point and Trellian took up command over the Alliance army and he gave Uther the title of Lightbringer. For so you shall be known henceforth, in honor of the holy light you brought us this day. They then followed the fleeing orcs all the way back to the dark portal and they destroyed the portal itself, cutting Draenor off from Azeroth and saving the world, at least for that moment. Several years later, the Dark Portal would reopen and Trellian would rally the Sons of Lothar to take the battle to the Orcs, their home planet. By that time, Uther had taken up a different role and he now used his powers to heal the people within the Cathedral of Light. We read about him at the start of the story as he had just helped a woman give birth to a child, but for the rest of the story, he didn't really play a part. Instead, we later find him in Lordaeron, teaching the child of the king how to become a righteous and noble paladin. The child that would later become one of the greatest threats to Azeroth, namely Arthas. It wasn't easy to teach Arthas about the ways of the light. As a young boy, he would rather go and ride his horse invincible than stay inside and pray. Nonetheless, Uther did his very best to teach him, and once Arthas had finished his training with Muradin, he started his training with Uther. Uther's training wasn't so much about swordplay itself, but more about the attitude and respect someone brought to the battlefield. Being righteous and holy doesn't stop when someone leaves the church. They take it with them in all aspects of their life, and he tried to teach Arthas these values. Arthas found that both teachings had value, and after many years the day had come that he would become a Knight of the Silver Hand. Arthas felt like he didn't deserve the honor, and he told Uther about his feelings. The intimidating paladin, who since Arthas was old enough to remember, had been the very image of rock solid steadfastness to the light, had startled the prince with his reply. Lad, no one feels ready. No one feels he deserves it. And you know why? because no one does. It's grace, pure and simple. We are inherently unworthy, simply because we're human. And all human beings, I and elves and dwarves and all the other races, are flawed. But the light loves us anyway. 
It loves us for what we sometimes can rise to in rare moments. It loves us for what we can do to help others. And it loves us because we can help it share its message by striving daily to be worthy. Even though we understand that we can't ever truly become so. With that wisdom, Arthas took his vows and it was Uther himself who placed his ceremonial armor on his shoulders. Arthas had known Uther to be a steady man, but in that moment his eyes were full with unshed tears. Uther loved Arthas dearly and in that moment Arthas had made him very proud. We'll get back to Arthas in a moment, but first there's another story in which Uther played a part. Tyrion Fordring, one of the original paladins from the Order of the Silver Hand, was dragged into court. He had met the orc Etric, who was hiding in his lands, and they battled with each other. During that battle, they ended up in a tower which collapsed on top of Tyrion. Etric was a very honorable orc, and slaying a human who couldn't defend himself was not his style. So he placed Tyrion on top of his horse, and he made the horse bring him back to the keep where he could recover from the wounds. This story is told in the novel Blood and Honor, and throughout the story, Tyrion and Etric get to know each other and to develop respect for each other. Tyrion felt in debt to the orc, and he made him a promise. On his honor, he would protect the orc and let him live out his days in his land. Etric promised him on his honor that he was done with the war and he just wanted to live out his days. This might not seem strange now with all the orc interaction that we have in Warcraft, but back in the day, this was an insane concept. Orcs were seen as nothing but savage monsters who tried to take over Azeroth, which in all fairness, they were from the human's point of view. From their interaction, Tyrion found out that there was more to it, but his people, they were stuck in their mindset. They wanted Etric dead, so they told Tyrion to do his duty, to show them the way to lead them to where he last saw Etric. Tyrion had no choice. He did this because he had to fulfill his duty, but he was also a man of honor, and when they found Etric, he couldn't just let them beat the old orc to a pulp. They whipped Etric, they spat on him, they humiliated him, and on his honor, Tyrion had promised to protect him, so he told them to let Etric go. All that he accomplished was that Tyrion himself was placed in chains, dragged to court for treason against mankind. Treason for trying to protect Etric. His judge turned out to be Uther, the Lightbringer himself, the leader of the Paladins, his former brother in arms, now forced to pass judgments on to his old friends. He asked Tyrion what was going on, why he was protecting this orc, and Tyrion told him that he couldn't perform his duties without forsaking his honor. Without giving up that which he held most dear, which made him a Paladin, to Tyrion, honor meant everything. As a final offer, Uther gave Tyrion a choice. Forsake the orc, pledge your allegiance to the Alliance, forget about this madness, and they would drop all charges and let Tyrion go home. But Tyrion couldn't. With all odds against him, he made the decision to hold on to his honor and he refused the offer. This left Uther with no other choice but to strip Tyrion of his titles, exile him from his lands and excommunicate him, taking away the powers of the Holy Lights. Never before had Tyrion felt such a despair, such an emptiness inside of him. Just before Uther left the courtroom, Tyrion asked about his son and his wife. Would they have to share his fate? his punishment for a crime they did not commit, and thankfully Uther told him that they didn't have to. The final act of kindness for his old, stubborn friend and respected fellow paladin. For those wondering how does this story end for Etric and Tyrion, well Etric gets saved by Thrall before his execution, and Tyrion would live out his days as a hermit, keeping an eye on his son. But that's an entirely different story, this is Uther's story, and Uther's story would resume in Warcraft 3. During that time, around the land reports of a plague were rolling in and King Terranus sent out his own son to investigate. Jaina Proudmoore joined Arthas and they found out that Kel'Thuzad, together with Mel'Ganis, were behind the plague. Even worse, the plague was not meant to just kill the people, it was designed to turn them into the undead. Into the Scourge. Prince Arthas, during the night a vast army of undead warriors emerged and began attacking villages at random. Now it's heading this way. Damn it. Jaina, I'll stay here to protect the village. Go as quickly as you can and tell Lord Uther what's happened. But... Go, Jaina. Every second counts. The town of Harfglen was under heavy assault, and Arthas told Jaina to go and find Uther while he held the city. Wave after wave of undead flowed into town, but Arthas managed to hold his ground long enough for Uther and his troops to come and help them. Light, give me strength. 
For Lorara, for the king! Luther, your timing couldn't have been better. Don't celebrate yet, son. This battle's far from over. I'm surprised that you kept things together as long as you did, lad. If I hadn't arrived just Look, then... I did the best I could, Uther. If I'd had a legion of knights riding at my back, I would have... Now is not the time to be choking on pride. What we faced here was only the beginning. The undead ranks are bolstered every time one of our warriors falls in battle. Then we should strike at their leader. I'll go to Stratholm and kill Malganus myself if I have to. Easy, lad. Brave as you are, you can't hope to defeat a man who commands the dead all by yourself. Then feel free to tag along, Uther. I'm going. With or without you. Uther was very proud of what Arthas had managed to do, but the compliment struck Arthas as an insult. He then rode off to Strathholm, and Uther talked with Jaina. He's feeling the weight of the crown for the first time, Uther said quietly. He's never had to before. This is all part of it, my lady. Part of learning how to rule wisely and how to rule well. I watched Terranus struggle with the same thing when he was a young man. Both good men, both wanting to do the right things for their people. To keep them safe and happy. But sometimes the only decision is which is the lesser evil. Sometimes there's no way of fixing everything. After gathering his troops, Uther followed Arthas to Strathholm, where the boy had to face a terrible choice. Glad you could make it, Uther. Watch your tone with me, boy. You may be the prince, but I'm still your superior as a paladin. As if I could forget. Listen, Uther. There's something about the plague you should know. Oh no. We're too late. These people have all been infected. They may look fine now, but it's just a matter of time before they turn into the undead. What?! This entire city must be purged. How can you even consider that? There's got to be some other way. Damn it, Uther. As your future king, I order you to purge this city. You are not my king yet, boy. Nor would I obey that command even if you were. Then I must consider this an act of treason. Treason? Have you lost your mind, Arthas? Have I? Lord Uther. By my right of succession and the sovereignty of my crown, I hereby relieve you of your command and suspend your paladins from service. Arthas, you can't just... It's done! Those of you who have the will to save this land, follow me. The rest of you, get out of my sight. <laughs> You've just crossed a terrible threshold, Arthas. Jaina? I'm sorry, Arthas. I can't watch you do this. Jaina could not stand by and watch Arthas do this, and Uther was sent away by the prince himself. You can debate whether or not Arthas' choice was wrong, but for Uther it was. Arthas then purged the city, and at the end Melganus taunted him to come to Norfrens. Come to Norfrens, where his true destiny would unfold. I'll hunt you to the ends of the earth if I have to. Do you hear me? To the ends of the earth! Three days later, Jaina made her way to the city after Arthas had asked her to join him to Norfrent. She had refused to join him and did her very best to convince him not to go. If Melganus was able to escape him in Strathholm, what chance would Arthas have against him in Norfrent? Uther rode up to her as she witnessed with her own eyes what her prince had done. Jaina! Jaina Proudmoore! Lord Uther? Ah, Jaina. I thought I might find you here. Where has he gone, girl? Where has Arthas taken the fleet? He came to me before he left. I pleaded with him not to go. I told him it sounded like a trap. Where? Northrend. He's gone to Northrend to hunt Morganus. Damn that boy. I've got to inform King Terranus. Uh, don't be too hard on yourself, girl. You had nothing to do with this slaughter. 
You don't see it in the cinematic, but Ufer told Jaina that he himself wondered if he could have done something, could have said something to prevent this purge. Arthas had made his choice, a choice which would have dire consequences. After finding out that Arthas was going to Northrend, Ufer made his way to the king and he informed him about what Arthas had done. The troops were recalled by Ufer's orders, but before they could make their way home, Arthas burned down their ships. Damn Uther for forcing me to do this. Now they were stuck in Northrend, and there Arthas found a weapon Frostmourne which stole a piece of his soul and gave him the power to defeat Melganus. After that, Arthas would roam the land of Northrend, listening to the whispers of Ner'zhul until the day came that the prince returned home. Ah, my son. You no longer need to sacrifice for your people. You no longer need to bear the weight of your crown. I've taken care of everything. Arthas was no longer a paladin, he no longer wielded the lights, instead he had become one of the first new death knights. He murdered his own father, destroyed his own kingdom, and as a cruel twist of fate, he now worked together with Kelfuzad. Kelfuzad was killed by Arthas himself, but in Ner'zhul's grand design, they would now have to resurrect him. In order to transport his remains safely, they would have to collect a magical urn. Vile betrayer! enough to even carry your father's name. Why Uther ever vouched for you is beyond me. You've stripped him of his honor by casting yours to the winds. You deserve a gruesome death, boy. Light have mercy on you. Your betrayal has broken Uther's heart, boy. He would have given his life for yours in a second. And this is how you repay his loyalty? Your father ruled this land for 70 years. And you've ground into dust in a matter of days. Very dramatic, Uther. Give me the urn, and I'll make sure you die quickly. The urn holds your father's ashes, Arthas. What, were you hoping to piss on them one last time before you left his kingdom to rot? <laughs> I didn't know what it held. Nor does it matter. I'll take what I came for one way or another. I dearly hope that there's a special place in hell waiting for you, Arthas. We may never know, Uther. I intend to live forever. Uther was a vessel for the Holy Light, and although he wasn't able to fight Arthas before he couldn't make himself do it, he was willing to do it now. It was the final promise he had made to his king, that the ashes would be treated with respect. In that final battle against Arthas, the Holy Light and Uther himself nearly won that battle. It was only because the blade Frostmourne somehow made its way into Arthas' hands, and Arthas managed to defeat his former mentor, his former leader, and his former friend. Not even death could stop this righteous paladin, for in classic WoW, Uther's tomb offered a quest for both the Horde and the Alliance. The Alliance honored Uther and received his blessing, but the Horde were sent by Melar Dawnblade to defile his tomb. Melar was a former student of Uther and he held Uther responsible for Arthas' betrayal and the fall of Quelphalus. When the Horde players did the questline, the spirit of Uther would show up and forgive them for their actions. In Raw of the Lich King, we find out that Uther's soul isn't at his tomb, it's actually imprisoned within Frostmourne. <sighs> Frostmourne, the blade that destroyed our kingdom. Stand back! Touch that blade and your soul will be scarred for all eternity. I must attempt to commune with the spirits locked away within Frostmourne. Give me space. Back up, please! Could it truly be you? Uther! Dear Uther! I... I'm so sorry. Jaina, you haven't much time. The Lich King sees what the sword sees. He will be here shortly. 
Arthas is here? No. Maybe I... Arthas is not here. Arthas is merely a presence within the Lich King's mind. A dwindling presence. But Uther, if there's any hope of reaching Arthas, I... I must try. Jaina, listen to me. You must destroy the Lich King. You cannot reason with him. He will kill you and your allies and raise you all as powerful soldiers of the Scourge. Tell me how, Uther. How do I destroy my prince? My... Snap out of it, girl. You must destroy the Lich King at the place where he merged with Ner'zhul. Atop the spire, at the frozen throne. It is the only way. You're right, Uther. Forgive me. I... I don't know what got a hold of me. We will deliver this information to the King and the Knights that battle the Scourge within Icecrown Citadel. There is... something else that you should know about the Lich King. Control over the Scourge must never be lost. Even if you were to strike down the Lich King, another would have to take his place. For without the control of its master, the Scourge would run rampant across the world, destroying all living things. A grand sacrifice by a noble soul. Who could bear such a burden? I do not know, Jaina. I suspect that the piece of Arthas that might be left inside the Lich King is all that holds the Scourge from annihilating Azeroth. Then maybe there is still hope. No, Jaina! He... He is coming. You... You must... He shows up for a second time during the Queldalar questline where he tells players that the blade is made from Serenite, the blood of an old god, and is absorbing the evil from Icecrown itself. There is only one way to cleanse this sword. Make haste for the sun well and immerse the blade in its waters. I can resist Frostmourne's call no more. The final time that we see Uther Spirits is when you turn in the Badge of the Silver Hand. This item can only be collected when you kill the Lich King with someone wielding Shadowmourne in the raid. The Badge of the Silver Hand was given to Arthas by Uther himself and you can give it back to his spirits in exchange for the Tabard of the Lightbringer. Arthas. Alas, hero of Azeroth. You give me a greater gift than you know. Long have I struggled to forgive the Prince for his terrible transgressions. My soul has been racked with unbearable anxiety, dark thoughts, distancing me from the light. I recall clearly the gleam of pride in his eye as he stood before me eager to defeat the enemies of the light. Eager to defend his people, no matter the cost. It is this memory of Arthas that I choose to keep in my heart. I shall always be in your debt, friend. Thank you. And so ends the story of one of the greatest paladins ever known to this world. Throughout his life, Uther was righteous and devoted to the light. He protected his people against the Horde, and he tried to defend the land against the Scourge. In the end, it was his own beloved prince that killed him, and this act turned his soul to darker thoughts. Giving him the badge of the Silver Hand reminds him of the good within Arthas, and now the soul of this righteous paladin can rest in peace. And that's the end of Uther's story. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos. And until next time guys. See ya.